Hey guys, welcome to another Knife <coughs> Making Tuesday. I'm a little sick this week, so forgive the uh, coughing and all that stuff. But um, this is Grinder Week, yet again. <coughs> oh man. Anyway, um, making some more of my grinder parts. <coughs> I'm really sick. But, uh, so here's one of them. Um, when I put it on the mill, of course it's a rectangle, and with CNC you have to tell the computer if it goes this way or this way. It was supposed to be this way, but I put it this way, so it drilled too many holes. Luckily I was able to save it by rotating it this way and re-drilling, and uh, only these two got really close, but they didn't overlap or anything, so that's good. <coughs> that's like I have a frog in my throat. Um, so this one will work, and uh, like usual, I held it down with vacuum, so I couldn't go all the way through without breaking the vacuum seal. But you can see I went just deep enough to uh, dent the drill bits, and this is that big hole right here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's it's really thin. I told it to be ten thousandths of an inch, and it's probably pretty close to that, so I just have to punch them through and drill them out or dremel them open or something like that. Anyway, so I got another piece going right here, and let's go check that out. So I've got it on the uh, Vac Magic with vacuum suction, a big black O-ring going around uh, underneath the part. Um, just for some added security, I'm using a brass Mighty Bite um, cam action clamp. It sort of just pushes it up just a little bit. Um, it helps keep it positionally stable left and right, whereas the vacuum will hold it down really well. It's just a safety thing, like, I, I don't want to screw it up, because I've only got one, and I only need to make one, so. Um, so right now I'm using the <coughs> Tormac Digital Touch Probe to find the corner of the part. Done. And I've already set the Z0 as the surface of the fixture, not of the part. <coughs> That way, if I know the exact height of the fixture, I can machine very, very close to it, but not quite. Whereas if I zero off the top of the part and I go down half an inch, that material is not exactly half an inch. It's plus or minus. So it could get closer to the fixture than I want. So depending on the, the operation, sometimes I'll base my Z off the... Z is up and down, for all you guys who don't know. Um, I'll base it off the fixture, or sometimes I'll base it off the part, just depending on what I'm doing. Got another piece done. This will be the base plate. Just four countersunk screws. And this will basically get clamped or bolted to my table uh, where the grinder's gonna go. Here's my car that's getting a manual transmission swap from an auto tragic. Anywho. <coughs> Still sick. <coughs> Oh, that's terrible. Okay, here's a piece I just made. Um, the camera was inside charging, so I didn't film anything. This is pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I still have to drill through for the bolt holes, but I popped out the center piece, which is over here somewhere. So you can see the little flap worked out really really well so when you're making a part like this um, it's not too difficult to program in a tool that will go in and chamfer all the corners but sometimes you just get lazy and you don't want to do it um, or in this case I didn't even think about it <clears throat> I was just trying to rush it and get the code done so that it would pop this out pretty quickly uh, it took 24 minutes to do this mostly because this part just was really slow and took a long time but that's fine 
Works perfectly, no problems. Um, my point is, instead of CNC chamfering, I've got this tool here. It's called the scraper. It is a deburring tool. This one's made by Noga. Um, but yeah, it's a little blade, basically, that swivels, so it always drags. And then you can just go in there and deburr all the corners and all the edges by hand like that. Pretty quick, pretty efficient. You can do holes and outsides and top edges and corners and everything. And I actually haven't used this tool in a year or two, maybe. Um, I don't know why. I like it. It's fun. It does a great job. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, that's a deburring tool. Very handy. Recommended for any shop. So, that guy's done. Motor bolts to here. Let's go see if it fits. I don't know. Okay, it looks like my hole is 4.496. Call it 4.495. It looks like this guy's 4.499, which is four thousandths bigger. And usually, when you want to slip fit something, you make it bigger anyway. Um, so this is four thousand smaller than it should be, plus the clearance room that you would need. So probably give it five thou or something, I don't know. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's not going to fit. So basically I need to clamp it down, probe the center of that, and remachine it. Not a huge deal, but... Okay, so I just probed the center of this hole, so now I know pretty much right here is exactly the center. And then I'm going to go around and just slice that open just a little bit more. And I don't have it held down with vacuum, obviously, because the big hole. So I'm just using this uh, cam action cl clamp against two bolts in the back that's just pushing it in so I mean it's not held down I mean it's held down onto the fixture but the fixture can lift up but it's such light cutting that it's not going to be an issue I hope and we'll leave the coolant off just so we can see what we're doing here So unfortunately that wasn't perfectly on center, surprisingly enough. Um, it didn't cut pretty much from here to here, but I could hear it cutting around the outside here. I don't think it's going to be an issue, it's going to work fine that way. But uh, let's test fit it again, see if it worked. So I measured the hole, it's about 4.509, and the boss is 4.499. So the hole is about 10 thousandths bigger in diameter, and it's got just the tiniest little wiggle side to side, which is acceptable. In a perfect world, I'd probably make that five thousandths clearance instead of ten thousandths, but this works fine. And then once I punch through the holes, then I can bolt it to the motor right there. Good. Progress. Success. So this is the piece that's going to be tricky, because it's 13 inches wide, which is no big deal, but it's 12 inches tall, which is a big deal because my Tormac only goes 10 inches as far as usable travel. So how do I machine something that's 12 inches tall on 10 inches of travel? Well, I break it up into two sections. So basically I'm going to machine sort of the top half, flip it over, and then machine the other top half. And that way, um, luckily the two halves that I'm doing are not related to each other, so the 
if they're a little bit off between each other, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, that's how I'm going to do that, just in two sections, no big deal. So I'm going to vacuum it down, and I get this huge surface area to suck down with. And the more surface area under the gasket, the more force you get, so this shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. <coughs> and then I've just got two bolts here to give me a somewhat repeatable uh, measurement that way. Awesome. This over here is my vacuum gauge. Shows how much vacuum the pallet is pulling. Uh, above 20 is awesome. For something like this, probably above 10 would be enough. Success. So this is the main body of the grinder, the main motor plate. This piece comes out. <clears throat> bolt holes, brackets, this is part of the tilt uh, up and down mechanism. And then <coughs> cut away this section, just because I don't need it. But I was able to make two extra brackets from this section. These would be for the tracking adjustment knob. Because um, otherwise it's just wasted material. So while it's all fixtured up and everything, I'm going to get to make these brackets and save some material. There's a bunch extra here that I didn't have a use for today. So yeah, that turned out really good. Here's one of the pieces that I made uh, many months ago. Um, I have to drill and tap two holes right here. So I put it in my vise and for about one and a half seconds I tried to figure, I tried to wonder, you know, okay, how am I going to level it? So after like one and a half seconds of thinking about it, I was like, oh duh, I've got this digital angle gauge, let's, uh, let's use it. 1.8 degrees, 0.7, finicky to get it right perfect. So to drill and tap these holes I've got a bunch of plates that have weird little holes just on the side. It's kind of no point spending the time to write a program and do this via CNC so I'm just using the Tormac jog pendant to do it kind of manually, manumatically. <coughs> So I wrote a list of all my um, all my little pieces that need drilled and tapped holes and the location. Yeah, so for this one I wrote down from the corner I need a hole 0 0.25 in and then 1.75 inch in. And I can use the CNC to figure that out. So to tap these two holes, um, this is a classic tap, a hand tap. It's a bottoming tap. Here's a hand tap, which is a plug tap. You can see the difference. Obviously the bottoming one will take threads all the way down into the hole, whereas the plug is more meant for through holes. This little notch right here is called a split point notch. And that tries to push chips ahead of the hole, which is good for through holes, not good for blind holes. Um, these work okay for most tapping operations, but they're no longer my favorite. My favorite, it's called a spiral flute tap. Not to be confused with a spiral point tap. Spiral flute taps are the bomb. A little bit more expensive than regular hand taps, but they're freaking amazing. I wouldn't want to hand tap with this, but so you either do it with CNC 
or my new favorite way, with the drill. Um, one of my buddies, Brad Southerd, who's also a world famous knife maker, um, told me this maybe a year ago over the phone and it's changed my life. Um, tapping with the drill is freaking amazing and with these spiral point taps, no spiral flute taps, uh, it's so easy and so awesome. The best part about them is that the chips curl around the flutes and just go up out of the hole, whereas these ones, the chips just bunch up inside these inside these little flutes and you have to keep backing out and everything. This way is so awesome. So aluminum is kind of a gummy metal, so sometimes I like to use a little lube. This is ultra lube, meant for drill bits and taps and stuff. Just need a little bit. Super easy. If you want, you can set the uh, the chuck. Usually, it takes a pretty hard um, thingy. It depends on the size of the tap. Yeah, I'm gonna put it on drill because it just keeps popping it. Notice I'm backing off every little bit just to break the chips so that they're not so long. And that's that. Super easy, super fast. I've done as small as 440 threads. Um, Brad was telling me that he's done 256 threads, and he might have said even 080, which is just stupid crazy. Um, with those tiny ones, like I don't feel comfortable using the T-bar to hold them because I keep breaking taps. But this way it's great because it just spins it on axis, and you just visually put it in straight. It's awesome. So you can see these chips are curling and just pulling straight up out of the hole. And my drill is running out of juice. A little bit more lubrication would probably be a good idea, but... Done. Done, son. Perfecto mundo. Metric M8 fits right in. Love it. All right, I'm going to leave you guys hanging, cut it off right there, and uh, start shooting the next segment. I've done a lot of work, and uh, save it for next time. See you next time. Soon. Filming now. Bye-bye.